Hey folks, um, didn't have a uh, time to set the camera this morning or this afternoon. Just had to kind of uh, kind of come in office, did some work, and uh, getting ready to leave in a little bit. But I wanted to drop a little word this week, and and um, I'm going to start a series on Sunday called "The House That God Built," and I'm hoping that you'll join us uh, for that. And um, it's going to go for the next seven eight weeks. I'm going to talk about uh, what what a house of the house of God is supposed to look like, um, and then how to uh, enter through a door. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that. I really don't want to explain it today because it takes a, it takes some time to lay out. But a couple of things the Lord has been speaking to me. Um, one of the things has been about you know faith versus religion, and He always talks to me. But one of the things um, He said to me the other day was was this: My people want to know about me but they don't want to um, encounter me. They're, they're afraid to encounter me. That's stunning, um, you know, and I wanna tell you that really truly in the presence of God, it's uncomfortable. Um, it really is. Um, and I think people don't understand that. They don't understand that to, to be in his presence is uncomfortable. It's not um, something that is, um, normal in your life in the beginning and you have to learn how to and, and what happens is the more you get in his presence the more you're transformed the more you're transformed the more comfortable you get into his presence and i think that for a lot of people they think that's odd to be uncomfortable well god loves me why why am i uncomfortable why when he comes in do i feel so uncomfortable to be in his presence well the reason why people would feel uncomfortable in his presence because God is absolutely holy. Like there is nothing impure. There is no evil thought in him. There is no wickedness in him. And to be around him, for him to be in our presence, us to be in his, is something that is, is to me quite uh, revolutionary, quite, um, uh, quite empowering and frightening at the same time. So uh, I'm going to talk about building a house of God, the, the, the house that God built, and uh, I hope you will tune in for that this weekend. It will go on for several weeks. Um, and uh, this week, um, um, it will only have it available on Ustream for one week. Uh, Jeremy, our, our, our uh, media producer, is going to be out of town this weekend. So we'll Ustream it on Sunday morning, and then it will be available on Ustream all week, then he'll come back and he'll produce the video, put it on Vimeo. So, um, but my point being is that it's it's really, really important for you and me to understand that God wants to tabernacle with us. This was the whole intention. Uh, let's make man in our image and in our likeness, let's make him. And, and when Jesus came, he came to dwell amongst us. It was God with us. And this is such an, a powerful point that you have to learn how to practice the presence of the Lord and to make the Lord that, um, that part of your life that is, is you host his presence, that you are conscious of his presence, that you make yourself aware of his presence all the time. And that sometimes is... That, by the way, in the beginning, that takes a lot of effort. That takes a lot of work in the beginning. It's not something that happens um, readily. But when God does, there's, there's, when, when we pray for the sick and someone gets healed, God showed up. But that's not the same as his presence. That was his power. But when he's, I always tell people, I will beat you to the floor if the Lord fully shows up. I'll beat you to the floor. I will be on my face. Why? Because that's the only proper place to be when he walks in the room, is the bow, which is worship, surrender, and all those things. Our, our prayer, me and yours prayer, I want you to pray this with me um, for about the next you know 20 years. Let's try for the next week and it will work we'll go on from there and that's this i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy 
acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. This is what I want you to pray. Father, teach me how to be a living sacrifice upon your altar that you can come into my life in such a way as an all-consuming fire. Refine me, burn up all the dross, all the impurities, and take them away out of my life and make me into your image. Transform me, transform my mind, cause my flesh to thirst for thee, cause my heart to cry out for thee. I surrender to you a living sacrifice, like Isaac being offered up, like Jesus in the garden and on the cross. I just present my life to you as a living sacrifice, holy, only by your presence, acceptable, because I do it according to your ways. This is my reasonable service before you. I ask you to make me to transform me, to consume me, so that I would be a living sacrifice continually before you. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. That should be our prayer. Every day, every day, all the time in our lives. Why? <clears throat> There's no other reasonable service we can do. There's nothing else that me and you should really shoot for in this life other than to be a pure and holy living sacrifice. I taught on holiness all of, I think, just about all of last year and the year before. And it's not always met with a really wonderful attitude because I think we're there you get two standpoints either we'll never be holy or I am I'm holy by the blood of Jesus already so there's nothing I need to do but Paul says to the Rome to the Christians at Rome present yourself as a living sacrifice holy acceptable let me read this to you this is, I'm going to start in 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 11. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also being open, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part of a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I dwell in them. I walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. What a great promise. Now, obviously we're in the world. We're not of the world. We're going to do business with unrighteous, with unbelievers. We're going to do business with people who don't know Jesus. We're going to, we're going to have family members who don't know Jesus. We're going to have um, a lot of that stuff is just going to be what we have, you know, and there's nothing you and I can really do about it. It's just the way it is. And we're going to have those kind of things. And um, that's okay. I want you to know that that's really okay. But what Paul is crying out for us here is to, to um, understand the weight of this holiness. Understand the weight of God and the call of God in our lives. And so I want to talk Sunday about and start a message called The House That God Built. 
and then um, and then I'm going to bring it into um, this picture of since we are this house and what has been given to us are these great and precious promises now how to conduct our lives how to grow up how to mature how to so that we have this gate that we can constantly have an everlasting door into the kingdom so that we can fulfill our mandates and our callings in Christ. I want you to know God just absolutely loves us. He's long-suffering concerning me and you. He wants us to be faithful to him. He wants us to host his presence. He wants us, he wants us to think about him all the time. His house is supposed to be a house of prayer continually. Let's pray. Don't want to go long this morning. I just want to make sure I touch base this week with you. Say this to you, Father, I just thank you. Father, I ask that you prepare our hearts for the message. Prepare your messenger and prepare our hearts for what you're going to speak. I have no desire but to be in your will, to do your work and your pleasure. I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Father, I ask that we would truly understand what it means to be your temple and what it truly means to host your presence. What it truly means to be in your presence. There's no farther place in the spirit we can go than to your face. It's the ultimate place in your presence is your face. I thank you for it. I ask that you would just touch every person watching this video right now and that you would cause them to be consumed by your love and your goodness. I believe that this is a day of a new move of God coming upon us, the house that God built. I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. Well, God bless you. Hope to see you Sunday. If you can't be here, watch us. But we love you. May the Lord be with you. Amen.